pain and rage in Chiapas. Since 1994, the emergence and persistence of the Zapatista movement has been a pain in the side of the Mexican state. An indigenous, women-commanded, revolutionary army was a nightmare for the globalist NAFTA-era business servants of the Mexican government. They have repeatedly attacked the Zapatistas, not just militarily, but via the media as well. Now, the state, using paramilitaries, has attacked the Zapatistas again. On May 2nd, the Zapatista support community, La Realidad in Chiapas, was ambushed, and a teacher there, Jose Luis Solis Lopez, was beaten badly and shot several times. Solis Lopez, known affectionately as Galeano, taught at La Escuelita, the little school, a Zapatista institution. His killers are members of a Mexican paramilitary group with ties to the government. As a popular revolutionary army, the Zapatistas have denounced revenge, but they want their many supporters to know that Galeano's murder has sparked both pain and rage among them. They also see this as a pretext for attacks to come. They're calling for supporters worldwide to denounce this attack. For more information, contact an attack on us all at gmail.com. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Views and opinions of that not of Comcast, its staff, or associate viewer discretion is advised. Especially the show we did with uh, Selena. <laughs> <laughs> with that being said, I want to introduce the guest to my right. Brother, introduce yourself. Um, my name is Lucino. Uh, I'm 23 years old. Uh, I am part of the Church of Dreamers Alliance, and we are starting our new project, The Freedom House, very soon. All right, so pleased to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, sir. All right, and to his right, we got King of the Hebrew Israelites. Servant of the arena, and I'm honored to be among kings. Thank you, sir. <laughs> to his right, we got <laughs> Brother Yang. Get your What's Yang, up, yeah. man? Yang, man, you know, like, like every week, always good to be here. Yeah. Ready with excited about the show because we were having the pre discussion was off the hook. So I'm just okay. excited about getting it going, man. All How right. about you? What's been going on? I'm, I'm, let me ask you a quick question before we get started. Why does Gideon keep calling this silver dang servant? Oh, you know, that's, that's the trait of a king is humility. Oh, man. I'm Thank not you. buying that, Yang. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's get started here. All right, brother, you want to uh, tell us a little bit about Dream House or a little bit about what brought you here? I know we're, t we're talking about Im immigration. It seems funny now because we would have such a good discussion before show, pre-show. But you want to just get us caught up a little bit of speed. What's going on and the organization that you belong to? Okay. Uh, well, right now we are working on the... The Freedom House, basically what the Freedom House uh, is going to do, is going to help our community because uh, our Hispanic community is being like, uh, is being targeted by all these anti-immigrant laws here in Georgia. And uh, as you know, like the southern states, Georgia, South Carolina, and um, Alabama has been very tough mm -hmm. since 50 years ago when, um, when slavery was going on. That's right. So th the same thing is happening right now. Mm -hmm. For example, with the undocumented students, we have um, policy 4.1.6, which basically says that uh, if you don't have a nine social security, social security digit, you are banned from Georgia five top colleges. Hmm. So it's very hard if you want to go to those colleges because you're not going to be accepted, even though if you have a point, four point something GPA. Yeah. They're saying like uh, your work is not enough. Your right. work is not is for nothing. Right. And also we're working in in-state tuition. What in-state tuition means basically that even though if we have the fair action, which was granted by Barack Obama administration in 2012, mm -hmm. which give us um, legal 
legal presence here in Georgia, uh, we are we have to pay three times as much as a citizen. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you are a student, you will not be able to attend these colleges because you have to have a job, you have to have your parents. And it's very hard because students sometimes have to have two jobs. Mm -hmm. So they don't have enough time That's to right. study, to help their parents pay bills and everything. And also here in Georgia, it's very hard for the undocumented to just get a job because they run an e-verify that um, so basically you aren't able to uh, get a job if you get a job it's going to be minimum wage which is 725 yeah. and there are so many laws that target immigrants mm -hmm. and basically deportations is another one um, Georgia is home of three detention centers Stewart is one of the biggest detention centers in the whole nation mm -hmm. so every month they have quotas and basically what the quota says that every month there should be a number of people, undocumented people occupying those beds. Wow. So they must arrest a number of uh, undocumented people every month. Mm -hmm. So Georgia is like, it's very yeah. crazy on immigrant laws. And, and what you're saying is, especially about the college thing, is reminiscent of slavery. Come on. Because one of the things they didn't allow us to do was read. They would work us to death. They found out we were good workers, but they wouldn't let us get a higher, a higher sense of learning. And then the other thing, when you're talking about these detention centers, detention centers, Georgia's number one for prisons also. Yes. You know, which is uh, uh, a lot primarily targeted, starting out with African Americans and now, like you and I were discussing, we find being filled rapidly by Latino and Hispanic uh, uh, people of Hispanic descent and Latinos. So one of the things is, I would like to know is, why do you think, do you think that it's a larger conspiracy? Let's get to it. You know what I'm saying? Do you think it's a larger conspiracy to keep the Latino population from uh, gaining a higher education on a higher level of learning? Uh, yes, I think it's a conspiracy because uh, imagine if, uh, if undocumented students were able to attend this like uh, this college, this like high college where you can obtain like a degree, mm -hmm. get a PhD or whatever. Mm -hmm. These uh, students will occupy a better position. They will have better jobs. Right. Mm -hmm. So imagine if uh, undocumented students get to politics. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be making the decisions. And what the the like, politics? They don't want that. Oh, well, hold on, Lucino. <laughs> Do you hear that, kid? <laughs> Why don't you tell this man that the voting system really doesn't work? Cause I like his strategy here. I'm sorry, Lucino. Go ahead, cause we got some unbelievers on here. <laughs> <laughs> believers that are unbelievers. Right, believe it. I'm a believer. That's an unbeliever. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sometimes, I mean, yeah, so basically imagine um, more people in the politics, more people being like doctors, mm -hmm. creating their own, like, for example, clinics, mm -hmm. beginning their own business. Yeah. So, I mean, here, like, they don't want to see us get, like, progress. They don't That's a threat. Yes. So they don't want us to have a, like, they want us to go from, like, a kindergarten to, a, I mean, high school. Mm -hmm. But they just basically saying, this is the highest you can go. So they limiting us from exactly. going farther because they know we're going to be a danger. For we example, we shouldn't be workers. Work yes. for the wage for the rest of your life. And yeah, the white man take control of politics. So we got people like Gideon who tell our people, no voting doesn't work, but we know you Latinos like to vote. You hear that? You know? mm -hmm. They well, like see, to vote. And that, and that's that's why they're threat. We got to go. They're gonna be, it's right. And that's why they're going to be, and that's why you guys are going to be a threat. One of the things that you're saying is, and this is what that I hope that the African here in America, uh, gets from this whole thing and this is one of the reasons why as a revolutionary we first of all we have to support any oppressed people so as a revolutionary I definitely support your cause and what the uh, Latino and Hispanic community are trying to do to you know for humanity to have their right and humanity to life liberty and the pursuit of unhindered unencumbered happiness um, but one of the things that I think that scares this country so much especially about our Latino and Hispanic brothers and sisters is the fact that you guys practice national it's not the fact that you're working is they don't want you to get higher education because what you said you're gonna have doctors you're gonna have lawyers you're gonna have technicians you're gonna have industry you're gonna become industrialized and you're gonna take it back to your community see once you assimilate and once you buy into the whole capitalist materialist type of mindset if you would take your money I'm gonna tell you, you want me to tell you how the Latino community can get higher wages 
store buying Cadillacs. Mm -hmm. Start spending that money with the very system that's oppressing you. But if you take that money back to your community and start building strong communities, you're always going to have those people with your with their foot in your neck. One of the things is, hey man, I would like you to talking about a strategy here. Oh man, a strategy. But here's the thing: we are the ones as Africans in America. We don't get that we need a strategy because right. we've sold out. We haven't even bought in. We've even sold out. Even the so-called black nationalists, the so-called revolutionaries. The, even the so-called revolutionaries. You know what saying? Black power. Even the, those are the main ones. <laughs> right. You know, okay, because they, when they say black power, they're talking about neocolonialism. They want, a lot of them want to run white people out of those places. We need to get rid of the white people. We need to do that so we can get their job. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But it's not about a whole complete system change that's yeah. going to empower all the people and make sure that all the people have proper health care. Are you mean to tell me these that's black right. nationalists are really black capitalists? Basically, okay, so, I so for the record, I, for the record <laughs> and I didn't want to take it too far. Right. So one of the things that I did want to say, Lucina, and a question that I have is how can we as Africans here in America or black people in America aid and advance that cause and why would it be advantageous? What would be the benefit in it for us to really jump behind this immigration reform and to really start trying to repeal these laws? I think uh, because we have been through the same struggle. Mm -hmm. 50 years ago, uh, on, I mean, African Americans were fighting for the civil rights. We are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And are you going to allow that to happen again? Oh no. So right. it's basically they doing it to our like we are mm -hmm. as the humans I mean I don't want them to do it to an, another person right. because I've been through it my family been through it so we want to work together like uh, advocating our rights mm -hmm. like together because if we work together we're gonna have like more help financial help like uh, Medicaid Medicaid mm -hmm. all these things that are gonna help our families it's not gonna help us just us it's mm -hmm. gonna help everyone mm -hmm. because we're gonna have more like freedom freedom and we're gonna have our rights being heard because sometimes we have have a lot of rights but people are limiting your rights to like attend these colleges I mean for like any medical thing mm -hmm. so we want to work together in a way that every everyone is going to benefit for example imagine if uh, just African Americans with uh, Hispanic or Latinos we work together this nation will be better yes. the economy will be better That's so right. sometimes we someone has to pay like we don't want someone to just pay like the broken like uh, glasses mm -hmm. for what someone has done and we want everyone to have a fair chance even though if he wasn't born here but we are humans we have rights mm -hmm. so we want to obey like the the fifth amendment and all that those things that you know and listen mm -hmm. can, I, can I add this real quick not only do we make the country better economically we make it better politically Gideon <laughs> we will make it better you know the court systems the legislations Gideon, you know, the system that you believe in. Let me just say, que paso, amigo? Como estas? Bien, bien. Bien, y tu. I am just so honored to have you on this set. This See, is. Black Son as a king does not know how powerful he is. There have been so many of our people that have tried to make connections with the Latino community. And here Black has been able to connect with someone as beautiful as yourself and young and vibrant and intellectually astute. That's because I'm Mexican too, Gideon. We all Mexican, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> America belonged to Mexico before they took it. Some of it yeah. So this is, some I mean, the Latino people for me are some of the most beautiful people that I have seen on the planet. Why? Because they love their families, they love their children, they are some of the most hardworking people I've ever seen, industrious, and they love to put their hands in the dirt, which means they love gardening, and wholesome foods. Cause I work. Yeah, you sound like these damn, damn corporations. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? You know, it's beyond that, Gideon. And, 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 I'm, and, and I personally take offense here because Africans here in America are some of the pain, some of the same people. And the struggle is different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we're looking at it because the struggle is different, but somewhat the same. Yeah. Like my beautiful brother here. They go through the same thing that we've went through. They sure. have they have been a colonized people and a conquered people by the Spaniards. The conquistadors came. Well, they are the Spaniards. 
Mm, Latino. I know no, they're, they're factions. They, it, they, 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 listen, explain that. They then. were, they were Mayans, Azteca, Aztecas, mm-hmm. Incans. They were Indians. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And European Spaniards oh. came mm-hmm. and conquered them. The mm-hmm. conquistadors. Okay. Cortez, what is his name? Cortez. Portuguese. And all, and all of these people, mm-hmm. they came and conquered them. So mm-hmm. when they left, they were left speaking Spanish. Gotcha. And having some of the Spanish and some of their culture and heritage okay. is infused with Spanish conquistadors or the conquerors that. But what has happened is that after they left, the, the Spaniards left. They had the uh, Mexican, uh, especially in Mexico, they had a revolution, they had a revolt. Okay. And they yeah. rose up mm-hmm. and they got their independence. So they molded and formed their own ideology and their own cultural Culture. ways and mm-hmm. things of this nature. What has happened to us as Africans Which here? Which is an the, amalgamation of the Incas, the Aztecs, exactly. and the But what happened the to us is... Mayans. Their political revolution is when uh, Senor uh, Juarez overthrew Maximilian. Right, okay. You know, which Maximilian was a... Spaniard. Exactly. You know, Juarez was a Mexican. Right. Okay, you know, okay. Just, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, he can tell, he can tell and, and I hope that we get to this, but okay. what has happened to us as African people, mm-hmm. we have not only were we, not only are we being colonized now because we're here being colonized, in fact, you'll find that uh, police patrol our streets and ride our streets like they do in Afghanistan, Iraq, sure. and any That's other right. people that have been colonized. Mm-hmm. You, know? you know, the apocalypse so, get in, right. you know, the one. So, yeah. One of the things, though, we find that our oppressor has constantly mm-hmm. been where the Spaniards had left and they rose up and, and Mexico was free to start to uh, form their own identity. The black man and the black woman right here in America has never been left alone to formulate their own identity and to really establish independence. In fact, and this is going to be, you know, in, in my conclusion in saying this, is that when they freed us, we were never g- given freedom. When you free a man... Wait, wait a minute there. You can't you, say you freed and then and then we've never been, been free. Never been free. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. When you free a man, the man has a right to self-determination, what we call cool Exactly. We have the right to that self-determination. We were never given the right, hey, do you want your own land? Do you want to go back to Africa? Or do you want to be a part of us? Exactly. They say, you're free. Well, and then they turn around and in say, word. In word. Then they turn around and say, unless you break a law, then you're not free. But who the hell said I had to be subjugated to your laws? If I'm free, why am I sitting before you to be judged? Well, no, I want to speak on some of these overseers. Because, I mean, Lucina, you talked about how some of the Mexican people want to get involved in politics, right? Yes. Do you have other Hispanics that say, no, I don't do that? Well, don't do that. That's the white man system. No, like I think uh, there are a lot of Hispanic people and Latinos there, like really, really getting into politics. Like, it, right? Yes. Uh, like for example, two months ago, I was in uh, DC, mm-hmm. and I uh, every day we have like a protest march outside the White House, and I mean the leaders, there are leaders out there from the, representing the community, the um, Latino community, mm-hmm. and there are people like young people that are pursuing to get there. You know, mm-hmm. for example, I have this friend, and he's say he's going for politics because he wants to make a change mm-hmm. so he has the vision and I know there are they're just not one it's like more thousands of undocumented students that they have like the potential to be there I mean mm-hmm. they know like working like as a young activist but they're gonna get there I mean mm-hmm. I'm sure uh, I mean laws will be changed Listen to that. now let me just uh, continue in that's nationalism Gideon it's exactly what it is <laughs> but see this is the point when I was uh, uh, illuminating and enumerating the various virtues of the uh, Latino community one of the points that I would ask in reference to governmental in- intervention, because when we talked about Vicente Fox, the previous uh, president of Mexico, he made a statement that was very popular. He said that so-called blacks in America don't want to work, which is why we are sending our people wow. to America. And we know that under the, uh, not Carter administration, but Clinton administration, NAFTA, was developed, this coalition between America, Mexico, Canada. You as a young man, and and you sound like a politician, but you sound more like a revolutionary. When I say politician, you're articulate and you understand the plight of your people. But having spoken of NAFTA uh, and and in your community, in your world, in your generation, have you seen any impact of NAFTA in uh, your world and in your environment? 
Honestly, I haven't. Like, I haven't, like, um, I haven't seen the change. Like, for example, I heard of NAFTA and the plan, what they're trying to work. Like, for example, this uh, alliance between uh, these three countries, the U.S., Mexico, and Canada. Mm -hmm. But uh, it doesn't benefit us because they doing, I mean, they're working at this, uh, I mean, what is it, like, treaty behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. supposedly it's supposed to help, like, our people some kind of way. Mm -hmm. But, like, people, I mean, if you ask any people of this, like, uh, NAFTA, they really don't know about what this is going to bring to us. Mm -hmm. If it's going to bring relief, it's going to bring, I mean, opportunities, mm -hmm. but it hasn't. To me, honestly, it hasn't. Let me ask you this, Dan. Have you guys heard that they're supposed to be building a express highway from America to Mexico that truckers, trucking should have total ac free access from a direct uh, route, rather, from America to uh, Mexico that's supposed to uh, encourage more commerce between the two countries. Have you heard anything about that? No, honestly, I haven't mm -hmm. heard of that. And I don't think, the, the commerce, I don't think it will work because I know Mexico, I mean, exports and imports mm -hmm. from the U.S. Mm -hmm. So uh, I haven't heard of the bridge that they're trying to create, honestly. And I don't know if it's going to work or not because I haven't gone deep and study about what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's, I mean. Well, let me ask you this last. Let me, let, me, okay. let me throw this one in here about the cartels that we hear so much in, uh, in Mexico. Mexico, that they are out of control, that there's been a lot of killings. Oh, you mean at the, the ones border. that we support, Gideon? The ones that America <laughs> supports. Unders, you know, it's kind of like sending when you guns. Yeah. Sending guns. And, you know, they're getting uh, drugs and everything. It is a question for our government. There. It is a question for our government. But this is the future we're dealing with here. This is a 23 year old intellectual right. warrior. So when we talk about cartels, America, drug war, are you impacted? What is the perspective as a young Mexican about uh, drugs in America and, and, and the cartels in Mexico? I think uh, most of the cartels and most of the people, like young people, are being involved into cartels because the president of the, I mean, Mexico president uh, is not creating jobs. In Mexico is like, Capitalist. yeah, so mm -hmm. not, there is no way you can make money. You know, if you work, you're going to pay for like a little amount mm -hmm. and uh, just basically working for $10 here in the U.S. This is where uh, every Mexican works each day up there. like the West Side. Yeah, it's so no job. basically uh, it's easy for people to get into drugs because it's, it's a way to get money and to just become out of the poverty. And um, as you may heard, I mean, the U.S. sold some guns to the cartels. Come on now. Well, do you yeah. teach? Well, let me ask you. Wait a minute. Hold on. He revealed yeah. some things. Okay. Say, go say that again. Yeah, the, the U.S. sold, like, uh, guns and all this yeah. type of yeah. weapons. So, like, the destruction up there in Mexico, like, cartels can just, you know, do their job. Right. Like, So, uh, that's not good because, I mean, drugs being are being exported to the to the uh, US. Mm -hmm. So we don't want that in here. Like we don't want cuz we're killing our families, we're mm -hmm. killing our children. Right. I mean, we're not sh giving them a good example. That's what I was that was going to be my question. Do you find because we find this uh, happening in our community and in what is called dehumanization and criminalization of the black male image. Come on. That's right. So what they do is they constantly show us on we go through the same thing whether yes. you know it or not. No job, so you get the brother yo, I got to sell dope, I got to feed my homie fam, my right. family, homie. Mm -hmm. But we find what they do is dehumanize us and criminalize us. That way they can justify murdering us and killing us on the evening news. Do you think that the drug cartel is, do you think that they're making it bigger than it is? And is this an attempt? to criminalize and dehumanize and to tarnish the Latino and Hispanic and image. And profile. And profile the Latino and Hispanic image. Absolutely. You know, is this something big? Should, should we really be this worried or is this something that's just bigger than life so we can, every every Hispanic brother we look at, uh, yo, homes, that type of thing, you know? I think uh, they're making it uh, bigger than what it is, mm -hmm. like, especially the news. Like, the news is gonna show you this chaos, yeah. this, all, yeah. everything. For example, I'm from Oaxaca and uh, it's a very like a state I mean it's very calm and uh, people like when you hear like for example the border like states you hear all these cartels mm -hmm. you're like terrorized mm -hmm. like you are like you know afraid to just step into Mexico mm -hmm. but every state is not like that I mean mm -hmm. so people are making it seem like Mexico is just the, the wild know, west yes. <laughs> you better have your six gun on your head yeah, <laughs> right. America right exactly <laughs> right. Right. right 
guy. Yeah, so I think uh, people should not be afraid to just go and, you know, have a, like, a trip to Mexico. There are different states that you can have fun with your family because the cartels mostly, like, is, like, on the border side because nice. they're, like, exporting drugs, mm -hmm. trying to make all these kind of things, you know. Mm -hmm. Let me just say that you have been excellent in the arena and we are not even all the way through the show. We've been hitting you with some uh, pretty heavy stuff. I'm getting ready to hit you again with some heavy stuff. As a historian, and uh, maybe you're very young, so I don't know how in tune you are with your own history and the history of your people, but our people historically were called Negro. Negro is a Spanish word that means black. Now, we know that those of us have done a little research, it was Spanish, Dutch, the Portuguese, and the British that were part, not were, are still part of the slave trade. Do you have any information in your historical perspective from, because a lot of the slave information was written in Spanish, because it was the Spanish that were involved in the trade, so a lot of information for us has been lost. What does your historical background, if any, tell you about why people who are supposedly brought from the south coast of Africa were called by a Spanish name, which is Negro? Uh, honestly, uh, to be honest, um, um, I started like a school when I was thir uh, three years. I mean, I started third grade here in the U.S. So I know not, I don't know that much about the history of Mexico because mm -hmm. I didn't go to school up there. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, that's crazy. I mean, if you think about it. I mean, I was expecting for like nigger or like negro mm -hmm. to be like an English word, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's the first thing that comes out of your mind. Because mm -hmm. uh, we get those names, I mean, right. if we go historically yes. back. And uh, I never thought it was like it came from, you know, Spanish, Dutch, and all this. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy, it's, you know? It like, started from there, but I, I'm sorry, I just wanted to jump in because I, I want our viewers to know and to say this for the historic record not the. Latino, not the Hispanic, it wasn't the Mexicans yeah. that right. did it to us. Yeah. It was the European Spaniards oh, yes, they, yes. from Spain. It right. wasn't the conquistadors. The conquistadors. It wasn't the brother here. It wasn't, it wasn't you know Jorge. Incas, it wasn't the Incas, right. the Mayans. The Mayans. They went through the same thing. They went through the same thing Absolutely. we went through. Gotcha. So when you had these Europeans, when you had these pale skins come over here who spoke right. Spanish, right? You know, a lot of the Spanish are dark now because we know of the Moorish influence. Exactly. You know, when the Moors came and we took that bad boy over yes. there and started mating and breeding. Yes. But before then, mm -hmm. they were pale-skinned mm -hmm. European Spaniards. Uh -huh. So I think that this is a distinction that has to be made because a lot of times when we say Spanish or Spaniards, a lot of the first image that comes up are of our Latino brothers and sisters. Right. But we have to know that they were uh, uh, indigenous people to their land. They were Indians. Right. right. And they were conquered people. And so yes. a lot of them, what they're suffering now is the same thing that we, we were are suffering. Are suffering. They're suffering, that we are suffering. Absolutely. They're suffering from the, using the language of their colleagues. Colonizer, yes. The dress of that colonizer, a lot of that influence. The thing was, the difference was, is like what you said, the rising up, uh, the revolution, and they yes. ran their colonizer and oppressor out of there. Uh, where we still languish mm. under the whip and the tyranny mm -hmm. of our of our, of our colonizers. Well, let me ask you this as a segue into his point and reference to color, because see, in America, what we have are color issues. Yes, hues based on the uh, amount of melanin. If you are darker, you are uh, kept away from the mainstream of economic and social political strata. But if you are light skin, that looks more like the oppressor, then you're given more access to certain privileges. In a Mexico, there are people that are darker than me. Mm -hmm. I mean, much darker. Mm -hmm. You guys still have the straight hair. Yes. Is there a color racial component in Mexico? And as a young man, even though you were raised here in America, you speak. Do you speak Spanish? Yes. Do you have some of the same issues among a social strata among your people? Um, I think it's not like here in the U.S. It's, it's probably less because I had like, for example, you mentioned the color. Like I heard like, for example, working with these different organizations uh, talking about deportations and uh, I heard they're using those in jails. You know, they bring like a piece of thing and they just based on your skin color, mm -hmm. they categorize you. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that's crazy because mm -hmm. imagine a, pe a person from, uh, uh, from the Caribbean, if it's Cuban, mm. he's gonna be dark. dark. Yes. Yeah. So the 
Dominican. Not necessarily. Dominican. There are Cubans yeah, that are look some, white. Yes, but he's saying like you know yeah, the like, Dominican Republic. Yes, Spanish speaking people. So I mean, there's the same thing in Mexico. I mean, in Mexico we don't pay I mean attention to that. Mm -hmm. There are like some people like some people that yeah, like to be racist. For example, the one that are wealthy mm -hmm. and they're like they probably pay attention to that. But mm -hmm. I was like, I mean, when I or like the town that I was living, we didn't pay attention. Even if it was darker, I mean, we didn't have like a big problem like he's in the the U.S. Mm -hmm. because once you step into the store, people are gonna say you Mexican, mm -hmm. even if you are from Central America or mm -hmm. South, yeah. I mean, South America. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 See the things yeah. right there. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's crazy. You get that a lot. Yeah, we. Yeah. I, I see that. That the people you get and people, people get mad Cuba about that. People like yes. they get offended. Like, you should be. Yes. I would be. Yes. I would be offended. Yes. I would, if I was El Salvadorian and I went in somewhere, and it's not that I had anything against Mexican people. It just would be I'm not Mexican. Right. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That simple. Don't want me in a box. Right. I'm El Salvadorian. I have right. a, a heritage, a culture. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I did want to talk to you about and we were talking about was the free education program mm -hmm. that you guys had established with the few professors had uh, from the university had volunteered to start to teach free classes. One, I want to know, were they European? Mm -hmm. uh, were they white Americans? And why do you think that they're teaching, teaching you free classes that you're not getting accreditation from or you're not getting any points? And who's behind the money? Who's financing it? Ooh, good one. Good one. <laughs> uh, well, Follow um, the money. Well, um, Just start somewhere. But you're looking at, they're setting themselves up for exploitation. Now, you did say something that was right. One of the things with this free university I would be very careful of is that they don't make you into what we call an Uncle Tom. And let me explain in, in our language what an Uncle Tom is. It's someone who has no ethic pride. It's right. someone who will... Right. Uh, he Sell out their grandmama for, for, for a dollar. You know, he doesn't care nothing about Mexico. He doesn't right. care where you're from or any of that. And for the money, he will sell you out. So a lot of times, they will ingrate themselves to you. Like a lot of our civil rights leaders and came to you. There's black people suffering right there in our city streets. And we haven't seen some of these civil rights leaders since 1950-something. And they, they're in your school trying to indoctrinate you guys to get into a civil rights issue. When you go into civil rights, my dear brother, then it keeps it an American issue. Mm. But what is happening with the Latino community as well as the black community, it is a human, human rights, rights violation. Absolutely. No one should be denied the right to health care. Right. No one right. should be denied the right to health care. No one should be denied the right to shelter. Right. No one should be denied the right to eat. Yeah, exactly. You see what I'm saying? And no one should be deride, denied the right to education exactly. in, in the pursuit of and search of a better life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things I say again, and I'll stick by this, what scares them about the Latino and Hispanic community is the form of nationalism yes. that you practice. They brought the Latino and Hispanic community over here to replace the, the Negro, the nigga is what us. they call us. Us. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And they put out this thing that we're lazy, right. we're shiftless, we're just right. tired. Right. We've been working for free for 400 some years. Come on now. And then the, after that, we had to go through segregation and sharecropping yes. and Jim Crowism Jim Crow. just to get to minimum wage. Hmm. So we're tired. We built this country and we are tired of having to fight for a right in the damn country we built. So they got tired of dealing with us and what they call that complaining. Negroes always, we freed you. What are you still crying about? We're we're you free. Free. Have your right, right. We, so they brought in another people. Right. But in, in bringing in the other people, they didn't, they didn't count on your resolve and your resilience exactly. and your, your feather and your firmness for love of family, yes. love of culture, love of heritage. And the earth itself. And the earth. And so what ends up happening is that the whole system starts to change. Now we're having debates like, is Spanish a second language? Right. Can we speak right. in the So it brought a whole new phenomena and a whole new dynamic mm -hmm. to the situation. Mm -hmm. What I think, though, is, and, and, and my thing to you, is in, your, as in the Hispanic community, and the one you belong to, because I know you can't speak for it all over, right. but what is the brown-black relationship, African and, and, and Hispanic relationship, and if there is a divide, what could we do to, to heal bridge that and that. mend that? How can we Excellent. bridge that gap and, and come together and form Excellent an alliance question. of oppressed people? For example, I think it's very important just to get to know each other because yes. uh, uh, I live in like a, in a community like uh, where like it's a lot of like African Americans and uh, the majority uh, are like, it's a mixture. So Hispanics and African Americans. So we're like in the same area. Mm -hmm. If we work together to create relationships, I think, and we understand what are we fighting, that's when you start creating uh, relationships. Mm -hmm. When you know like what you've been through, like the same situations, mm -hmm. like we're sitting right here right now talking about the problem mm -hmm. that we have to face out there. 
if we know the outcome or what will be if we work together. Mm. I think that's when people get motivated and that's mm -hmm. when we like see where where we stand mm -hmm. because if you're if you don't know where you stand i mean how can you fight like for several things like to change these policies mm -hmm. when you go like for example i was uh in jail five days i was one step of being from being deported mm -hmm. so when i was in jail the majority was african americans right. and hispanics right so now you see like they're targeting us Absolutely. so if we turn if we create relationships with each other like in these organizations, fighting for the same rights, for example, if we fight for immigration reform, we're going to fight for Medicaid. They're right. being taken away from African Americans. Just work together on different issues that want to benefit both mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. Wait so, a minute, so what, let, me, let me make this clear for the Negroes. You're talking <laughs> about a political alliance here. That's right. Yeah. A political alliance. Political alliance. Yes. Yes. And when I talk like that, that's the red dick in me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> red dick. Well, you we got to keep an eye on your Hispanics and niggas. Well, you're not, you're red. Before y'all take over this country. But no, I'm just going to. No, but no, you're talking about a political alliance, though. Right? Yes, it is right. like a political alliance um, because. Uh, but we got to participate, Gideon. That was my yeah, next question. Ahead. How important is politics and the participation in politics in the Hispanic Latino movement? And it, should this be something that us as Africans here in America who are being oppressed, is this to be something that we consider to get more involved in? Yes, because, I mean, when you have people like uh, that knows what's happening, like politics, like in the Senate or like in the House of Representatives, oh, yes. uh, you see that uh, most of people, like, they play a certain role, like, for creating, for, like, uh, creating these laws, policies. So if the more people you have in there that support you, I think the better. For example, we're, we're trying to work with Kasim Reed and uh, to just help us to like, uh, and he's willing to work with like, uh, recently he sent like a letter to the board regent mm -hmm. saying that he support us. Because he wants them votes. Yes. He, he wants, he wants, <laughs> he wants, he wants votes. the votes. We're like, we're not, I mean, we're, we're not like the be beginners. We know right. like everyone's in politics wants something in exchange. Mm -hmm. So like, this is how, how you work things out. For example, with the deportations part, mm -hmm. you know the elections are coming. Right. So people are like, there are several people that want like the vote from the Hispanics. Right. Mm -hmm. But what are you going to give us? How are uh, you going to help us? Uh, you're leveraging your vote. This yeah. is, but see, this is the thing. Le oh, wait, get it, leveraging the vote. So this is not, <laughs> let me say this to the so-called black Before national. I respond. This is no build a bird conspiracy. This is something <laughs> that you guys yes. put together, right? Oh, okay, I just wanted to say that for the record. Well, okay. you're leveraging your vote in a system because you already have a country that has uh, lobbied for you. You have a government. See, this is the thing that we don't have in this country. We don't have a governing body that would advocate for us no, as a people. No, I disagree with that. I, okay, I mean, is, is, Mexico, is, is Mexico fighting for, fighting for no, you guys? No, no, no. no. I, I, think, I, think, I think we come here seeking for a better future, have a better life. Right. We do send stuff. I mean, every Mexican sends yeah. money back right. to Mexico right. and everything. But we know the struggle is not in Mexico, it's here. So mm -hmm. we cannot, I mean, I think Mexico is one size, mm -hmm. I mean, away from the rights that we're fighting for. Well, so I think uh, to a certain level, to a certain level, just to get a better. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, again, NAFTA, and I know you said you didn't think or see any things or the residual of impacts of NAFTA, the uh, multi-labeling, multi-language labeling that we see in America that has English and Spanish, Spanish mm -hmm. NAFTA. Uh, when you see the labeling in the school in the school system, when you see more Latino teachers and everything involved, so. Uh, bilingual teachers. That's NAFTA. You, you think NAFTA? Oh, absolutely. I don't think NAFTA. I absolutely. think I think I think it's the economic and political involvement of the Latino and Hispanic people right here in America. Hello. Sure. You know what I'm saying? It's they have put pressure on the uh, this country to recognize them as a real force. Yeah, they're flexing the what they got what There it is. You have a flag. Yeah, what government? government? You got a, a but government. he said Mexican is not. So, he no. said Mexico is not supporting them over here. Mexico is well, not that's what them. he's saying. Not him, but see, this is understand. Mexico oh. supporting. Listen to what I'm saying. You gonna tell this man about his struggle? No, no, no. I'm Wait. not. I'm simply saying that the Mexican people over here are entrepreneurs. They right. they, start they go and set the up end. their businesses. They we did are, that. Absolutely. So it has not worked for us, and it's not going to work for them no, no, because no, they've got a of government of oppression set up to prohibit them. That's what he's saying about the colleges and the lack of education. This is a strategy by the yeah. white 
oppressive system to keep the underprivileged down. So at the end of the day, even though they go into the political arena expecting equity, no. let me give you an example. Wait, wait, do you go in there expecting or fighting? Fighting. Okay, let me the example I would fighting give you Gideon. is Snellville. Gideon, the mayor the man of just Snellville. Said, I have several Mexican friends. He's saying the same thing. We go in there fighting. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not man. saying don't fight. I'm saying the no, mayor you said of Snellville, duly elected, went into her office, hired, she was a young lady like yourself, young progressive, coming out of the uh, issues of race and all that, hired a young black Was she sister Latino in a, or something? No, she was a sister. Okay. Hired this uh, European, young European mayor mm -hmm. in Snellville, hired a sister, not only did they reduce the mayor's salary by thirteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars, the person that she hired, they put her. They wouldn't even let her in the office. Then they moved the office to the basement. This is a duly elected political figure in American politics. Okay, Gideon, are we so the point that I'm just simply making: you cannot trust the American government, and just because you have numbers. They don't give you get, a, they don't care. Get in. I would I would agree. I would agree in the sense of saying that you can't trust historically or people have showed us that Thank they're you. not to be trustworthy. But to sit by and be non active, to be I ambivalent. Didn't say non -active this, and this is what I'm saying. Okay, because you you the Mexicans trust them. Right. I mean, we, they, we don't trust them at all. Because right. when I was in okay. DC, for example, like with this immigration reform, some people blame Barack Obama because under Barack Obama, he has deported almost two million people. See, see, look, see, look, President look, Barack look. been a fool. Yes. Come on, come on, yes. come on with it. And What's also, I mean, these are some people are just fighting for money. That's when no. we go back to Uncle Tom's, I mean, yeah, sellout. Tom. Yes, sellout. Sell out. So Remember that word, Uncle Tom, you might have to use that in the future. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> so basically, uh, with this, like, uh, Latino uh, leaders, some of them are really fighting for like you know equality for the all rights mm -hmm. and there are those who are just being fake mm -hmm. exactly That's right. so now when it comes to the immigration reform some of them blame the republicans they say the republicans you have to strike them they have to make the decision mm -hmm. and the republicans they give money to mm -hmm. the hispanic people and now what the hispanic people are blaming the democrats yeah. okay wait a minute wait a minute, so, wait a minute. Okay. let me so, slow it down that's the way yeah. they so do it yeah. so, so now you see so you like got the Repu Bambi, you got yes. the republicans yeah. Actually supporting paying yes. money, paying yeah. money to Hispanic and Latino yeah. people, right? To 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 push and promote their cause. Yes. Why are they doing that? Because simply they don't want to like. The, I mean, the whole like you know they don't want to be like up there, you know, having a bad image. Right. Mm -hmm. So they right. care about what their decisions. They want to be like, they want those votes, basically. Mm -hmm. There it is. I, that's what I was waiting for you yes. to get to. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're placating. They're really catering to you guys because they understand the strength, the, the political yes. and economic strength of the Hispanic community. Yes. Let me ask you this. And they're doing the same with the uh, LGBT. Yes, uh, LGBT. I mean, yeah, yeah. They were Did up they there in the same the vote yeah. when, they, when they, they used the vote when they took California? Did they use the, the vote man when sold they them took? out. They had Uncle Tom sell them out. Thank you. That's what I'm You're telling you. Right. But, but they're going to fight yeah, that. They but, got paid off. But what I'm saying is we can be like, at the very least, I would like someone to come talk to me and say, hey, what can we give you guys? Then have a police car pull up and beat me in my head. When we, become, when, we, when we become non-active deep, one of the problems with the African here in America, and I'm not a reformist, so I don't say that the political participation Strategy. in the political process is going to be the be all and say all because you can't change people's hearts. Thank the you. only thing that is going to help Thank the you. African man in here in America is complete and total independence, having right. our own institutions, right. our own businesses, That's just it. not from retail, but That's from it. also shipping and producing. Thank you. Thank you. That to control our own education, Shoreline. to control our own social economic structures in yes. our community. This is going to be the only salvation for exactly. us. But until then, in the meantime, in between time, we cannot pretend that we don't live here. Truly. We can, I don't care. We can dress as African as we sure, want to be. Sure. And in our minds, we can go back to ancient Africa. But right. at the end of the day, when you get pulled over, you have to go before a judge to ask for traffic tickets. True. So you have to pay a light bill, True. water bills, and all of these things. Absolutely. So then if we're already going to be subjugated to these laws and to these policies, why don't we have people, lobbyists and things of that nature, in there addressing some of these unjust laws and policies like I did Latino, Hispanic, brother. They could lay back and be like, you know what? We undocumented. Let's go get a little garden Yanga. somewhere in the corner. The and they'll thing. come and send a van, snatch all of them up, Yanga. and take them right back right. to Mexico. As a nationalist, nationalist, right. you're a nationalist. 
What is the one thing that destroys nationalism? Division. Religion. And what is the one thing that... Religion and spookism. That's what destroys I agree. Spookism. I agree. Non-participation. I agree. Now, what is the one thing that uh, religion and spookism and politics thrives on? Division. Spooky man. But but when you move as a force, it's like what he said. The Republicans are pandering to them now. Republicans. When was the last time you know a Republican even talked to a black man? They only oh, deal do with us. Under the table. No, he, this is how they do it. This is how they the do table. it. They talk to us through the libertarians. They send Andrew Hunt. Right. right. You know right. what I'm exactly. saying? So they, they say we're not going to use Republican. We're going to call ourselves libertarians. But. What I'm saying is, when you, as a nationalist, when you move as a whole, all of, all of, even, let me ask you this. Brother, the undocumented, people, see, this is what nationalism is, and watch this. The undocumented Latino, Hispanic brothers and sisters, are they backed and supported by documented Latino brothers and sisters? Nah, nah. The ones documented don't support you guys? They do, I mean, they do to a certain limit, because they lay back, you know. They're they, afraid of their status being they, compromised. Well, not really their status, but like, uh, just uh, if I was like, um, there are those who do it by heart, mm -hmm. they really support us, but there are those that just chill back and they don't want to, you know, expose themselves up there because they already have like what they wanted. They yeah. have like, they have those papers. Oh, right. y'all already got Uncle Tom's in the, in the mix. Y'all yeah. yeah. already, yeah. they didn't even, so, wait, they didn't uh, wait quick to <laughs> infiltrate you guys. They yeah. had this yeah, yeah, they right. <laughs> It's different because uh, when we support, for example, uh, in education, there are like a lot of like uh, Latinos or whatever, Latinos meaning from like different, uh, I mean, South America, they have papers. They mm. like, they don't see, they like already going to college and they don't see like they need to do something else, you know, because they are having those on um, mm. the education they want. But like, it's different when you uh, meet a like undocumented student that's working a job that is paying bills and they he wants to attend a college. Mm -hmm. So it's different. I mean, you see the different, like so the difference. class warfare here. Yeah, it's classism. They said yeah. no classism. Welcome to America, brother. Yeah. So Vesa, now when we talk about uh, Corona, and we know the drink that, Corona. Yes. With the lime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, we talk about uh, industries. We know uh, Latino people, Mexicans in particular, are famous drinkers. Yes. And do you? Oh, is that, that a stereotype? That's like the person, well, you know, we drink, we drink but y'all eat watermelon smoke blunts. You know what I'm saying? He might be being polite. Let me ask the, the question is, I always just say, I always just say, yeah, because they do drink. But I know, like, not just Mexicans, it's just yeah, 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 yeah. Well, but I'm talking about You got to watch brother. You're getting game on the arena. We're dealing right? with uh, industry and economics. Do you guys actually have factories in Mexico that produce cerveza and yes. uh and d d okay so, yes i mean uh, in mexico we have different like uh factories warehouses but who's there. your biggest import i mean who's your biggest exporters though that's what you gotta look at they who might are you, be who you selling to, us. to us there you go that's it yeah. oh, so it's an incestuous relationship it's just like yeah. the poppy fields in afghanistan it's just right. like it's just like the oil i mean i mean you know yes. the yeah. u.s trying to like go for mexico's right. like uh oil like mm -hmm. uh companies yeah. so oh this is an esoteric question uh uh what is it called uh uh peyote yes peyote i've always wanted to experiment exactly. do you know anybody oh peyote is an it's a uh cactus the indians be taking and getting again you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> okay. this you, man you, 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 you know me? what you want to have i'm gonna tell you have the hispanic community up in arms about <laughs> you know what i'm saying you all the you just get the man with the corona right <laughs> no, peyote is a cactus, and it's a hallucinogen. But why are you asking this man about peyote? He came he, about I mean, he, I didn't ask him if he's had it. Do, do you do you know that as part of the exports from uh, Mexico to America, peyote? Yeah, if it's a cactus, yes, I know. Yeah. Yes, yeah. okay. Because yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with the cactus because I crossed the border. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find, do you deal with a lot of, as a Hispanic, over here, do you, first of all, do you like to be called Hispanic American? What is the what is the, the terminology? On nomenclature. That? Yeah. What, what is, is the proper what, what nomenclature? Do the amigo. Latino community, do they like to be? I don't call him amigo. I call him a mano. I call him <laughs> I, I call him mano means brother, right? 
Hermano, yes. The mano. You know, Hermano. I don't call it an amigo. It's too generic. Amigo, everybody's not my friend, first of all. Okay. Yeah. So I don't call everybody amigo. Because you might not Like, Hispanics, like, there are Hispanics, for example, who speak English. Mm -hmm. And if you call them amigo, sometimes they get offended. It's offended. Oh. It's offensive. Uh, it is. Like, it's like, because it's like, it can become very generic. Amigo is, I mean, yes. Yes. Yeah, say yeah. It. I mean, it's because an arena, babe. Yeah. It's Just, because it's so generic. Amigo. Now, you know, let me ask okay. this question. Okay. In most races, he didn't ask my question. Oh, which one was he? Was was okay. so? What is the term that do uh, the Hispanics like to be called? Hispanic Americans, Latin oh, Americans, the Latino Americans. American? I think uh, they just like to be called Hispanics. Hispanics okay. just. Like, and what does that come? What does that come from? I mean, how does Hispaniola. that distinguish? How does that distinguish you from? Okay, because I say Hispanic, so but you're Mexican. Yeah, and you could have the his, Cuban. Hispanic, you could have the El Hispanic Salvadorian. Hispanic only. I mean, only. I think. Uh, when you are being called Hispanic, it just means Mexican, like in general. Okay. But like mm -hmm. Latino, it's just uh, Central America oh, and uh, South America. Okay. So this is when you use so the Hispanic word Latino. So Hispanic is, mm -hmm. is, is mainly for the Mexicans. Yes. Okay. Okay, before yeah, our I'm time is running out, let me ask this question, uh, Esoteric. Most nations have been profiled, have profiled us, black men in particular, Hebrews being of color, as womanizers. Latino people, Mexican in particular, have some of the most beautiful women on the planet, very voluptuous women. Do you have a problem with interracial mixing? Because I know most people protect their women, and Hispanic men tend to do that, but your women are very vivacious and very sexual. Do you <sighs> see uh, explicit race intermixing? Uh, oh, do you have, do your people a have a fear of interracial mixing with blacks and others? I personally, I don't have no problem. I mean, right. you see, uh, there are yeah. a lot of ladies who are pretty, even if they're not Hispanic. Yeah. I mean, you see a black ladies, they are yeah. beautiful. Yes. I mean, white ladies, Chinese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So personally, I don't have a problem. And I think in general, talking for our, our Hispanic, uh, they don't have a problem. I mean, it's not like that's uh, gonna that's gonna be a problem. I, 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 <laughs> listen, Wait a minute, hold on. Let it finish. Let it finish. Go ahead. I mean, some of them just like uh, some of um, I mean, Hispanics marry like a black uh, black uh, females yeah. or um, I mean, white females because uh, sometimes they, I mean they know that there's a like the path for citizenship. Yeah, exactly. So, that's and and and, and here's here's yep. where the problem lies. Let me mm -hmm. tell you something, Three dear brother. Minutes. Have no and I'm gonna be brief. Mm -hmm. Have no problem. I will state for the record, me. The interracial thing, I'm not with. Right. Have no problem with claiming your woman, loving your woman, and say, hey, she's a Mexican woman. Mm -hmm. I'm a Mexican man. We want to create a Mexican family. Right. Love on your woman. Right. I think that the black man, he has to start to love his woman. He has to start to take care of his woman, taking the flaws and the ills that come with his women, and we have to start protecting our women. Yes, our definitely. women have started to hate us, so they start to look to other races right. as being better than us. Mm -hmm. I tell them, well, you keep looking outside. The mess that you find in me as a black man is the mess that you help create. Mm -hmm. And the mess that I find in you as a black woman is the mess that I help create. Mm -hmm. So we have to fix that. Yes, definitely. So, because if you look, for example, you know you having a problem with like uh, your girlfriend, whatever. Yeah. If you're seeking for something better, they're gonna have their own pack. They're exactly. Gonna, so just might as well start fixing our own problems. And I think uh, Mexicans, like, even though if they have problems, they love their women, they love their kids. Good. And they try to like you know give everything like their yeah. love. I mean, supporting them in any right. kind of way. So mm -hmm. I think loving ourselves doesn't mean hate anyone else. Who's yeah. the number one Mexican rapper? Had, uh, Vicente see, Fernandez. Vicente yeah. Fernandez. Yeah. Are we out? We out. We out. Oh, all right. Oh. <laughs> Let's get this camera yeah, we gotta have you come back on, man. Yeah. Would you come back and do something sometime? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. 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 Y